Yeah, I've called them and I'm already, their FaceTime is unavailable, so I'll try to call back another time. Well, what about Facebook? Um, Facebook? It's yeah. live. I called them and I've texted them and FaceTime them and we'll see. Okay, now we're going to do the giant bunny to bring all auspiciousness. Yeah. And to route out all inauspiciousness. It's already, oh, already started. It's the the yeah. wave. I, I looked at yeah. one was out and then another one is going to go. Actually, this whole wave is all COVID about it. It's all about wave that. Yes. is ultimately going to be all auspicious. I totally <laughs> see it this way. Yeah. I totally see it. Is. It, is. it is. This is actually what the devotees have been it waiting for. It's a fact. And whatever everybody needs to go through is going to be to purge yes. all of this evil yes. that is there. All of this. Yeah. By the way, there's a fantastic uh, essay which just came from my issue. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, I'll send it to you. You sent it to my email. And no, someone else sent it to my email. It was a. Uh, to love it. She's been sending me a bunch of stuff. She's down here in Southern California, but mostly down in San Diego. That's family there. And anyway, he did a whole study. It's very interesting. And it also has predictions from a, an incarnation of the Lord about this time period. Oh. Yes. Vishwak Singh. Oh. Yes. He has some predictions there about this time period. And, you know, he's got all these quotes from Srila Prabhupada, very relevant quotes. About the demons and the government and the rakshasas and this and that. So interesting. Yeah. Anyway, um, we will say the giant bunny and we'll sing Ode Vaishnava Taku. Jai Suparikara Shishi Guru Gauranga Gandhara Dipa Giridhari Shishi Radha Vinodhi Hari Jiuki Jai. Jai Shishi Radha Govinda Gopinath Madam Mohan Juki Jai Jai Nitsilila Pradishtha Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Asta Tarasata Shri Shiva Abhai Charanaravinda Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Shri Pumbhada Ki Nitsilila Pradishtha Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Asta Tarasata Shri Shiva Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Nityalila Pravishto Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Stattara Sata Shri Shiva Bhakti Rakshak Shridhar Goswami Maharaj Ki Nityalila Pravishto Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Stattara Sata Shri Shiva Bhakti Pragyana Kesha Goswami Maharaj Ki Nityalila Pravishto Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Stattara Sata Shri Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur Shiva Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Shiva Akinshana Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj Ki Jai Shiva Bhakti Kumud Santa Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Shiva Prabhupada Parshada Vrinda Ki Jai Jai Natinila Bhavishtam Vishnu Pad Mahabhagwat Shiva Gorki Shardas Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Nitya Lila Pravishto Vishnu Pachi Shila Sachidananda Bhakti Manu Tadpur Ki Jai Vaishnava Sarva Bhom Shri Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaja Ki Jai Shri Shri Rupanuga Guru Varga Ki Jai Shri Bodhi Vedanta Chari Baladi Vidyabhu Sankarabhu Ki Jai Shila Vishwana Chakavarti Thakur Ki Jai Shila Narutam Shrinivasyam Raya Prabhutra Ki Jai Shila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami Prabhu Ki Jai Shri Rupa Sanatana Bhakta Raghuna Shri Jiva Gopala Bhakta Das Raghuna Sada Goswami Prabhu Ki Jai Shila Surukta Madara Roy Ramananda Adi Gaur Parshada Vrinda Ki Jai Nama Chari Shila Vidas Thakur Ki Jai Prem Sikho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Jai Shri Antara Dweep Maya Pur Sri Kola Dweep Prithi Dweep Jana Dweep Motun Dweep Rukti Bhattaka Shri Navati Dhamma Ki Jai Jai Shri Jagannath Puri Kshetra Dhamma Ki Jai 
श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपी गो श्याम कुंद राधा कुंद यमुना जय श्री श्री राधा मदान मोहन जीव की जय Shaya Vita Shaya Vita 
melody that I just sang is one of the famous, famous uh, Rodian Mat melodies in this sequence. And it's from Bhakti Vinod Thakur, how he breaks apart the Hare Krishna mantra and uh, then he's saying Yashoda Nandana Krishna, Krishna Krishna Hari Hari. Which Krishna are we singing to? Yashoda Nandana Krishna. Which Rama are we singing to? Radhika Ramana Rama. Let us understand that. This is a very deeply absorbed song. When you are with the whole Kirtan group in Bengal, in Mayapur, and they start to sing this melody, everyone, like, you know, the ladies, how they yodel? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, my God, it's like <laughs> crescendo. And it goes on and on, you know? And the excitement and the, and the, the how do you say, the, the pitch, everything keeps going up, 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 you know? One time, in Rupsanatan Dolima, when Gurudev was with us, and it was some of the earlier period when he first went touring in the West. So, might have been around like 95, 96, 97. But a lot of his godbrothers used to come to, uh, to also attend the Parikraman. There was one godbrother. He passed away quite early on. His name, his name was, um, yeah. Come on. We're, having, we're having a Facebook. So, the, uh, the godbrother's name was Gurudev's uh, godbrother, our disciple of there was a lot of yeah. very good kirtan leaders. I see. Kanai Ramachari. Mm. Kanai. Kanai. <laughs> Kanai. He's very old. But he had a voice that was full of emotion. And he was not like a polished singer with a beautiful sounding voice. No but it was full of emotion. One time I asked Srila Gurudev in that early period, I said, Srila Gurudev, in all of Gurudev of course you're the greatest Kirtaniya, but who do you like the best in all of Gurudev Which Kirtaniya? He said, Kanai. Kanai Brahmachari. Mm -hmm. So one time, and I'm sh pretty sure that this is recorded on, on video perhaps, uh, we were there in Rupsanatan, you know, and uh, this song, Ohe Vaishnava Thakura. He took the mic and stood up there, and the whole temple was packed. It's not such a big, huge temple, room, but, you know, there's a few hundred devotees in there. We were there sitting next to Srila Trivikram Maharaj, you know, on the dais, and a couple of other, his sannyasi godbrothers there. And Kanai Brahmachari Prabhu. He began to sing Ohe Vaishnava Thakura. And you know, there's a certain kirtan style that was is very prominent amongst those who are expert kirtaniyas and with the instruments also backing up. And what they do is sometimes they'll sing with great emotion the verse, Ohe Vaishnava Thakura Doyara Sagara Idase Kornakari And they're Bengalis mostly, so they know exactly what the words mean. Right. You know, and they're thinking about that. It's not like a lot of the Western devotees, they sing the song, but they're not really thinking about what it means. Mm. So then he pulls you in. Because after he builds up that first verse and ki continually repeating, you know, then he stopped, the, the, the singing stops in the background, the Madanga and the Kartals continue. Right. A little bit softer. And he begins to speak. And he begins to speak about the meaning of the verse. And he begins to glorify the Vaishnava Thakuras. And, you know, it's just like, 
and, and this goes on for like five minutes, you know. Then he breaks into the next verse again, you know, and it's like reaching another crescendo, you know, mm -hmm. through the four verses of the song. <laughs> and Gurudev, they're all weeping and weeping, and this is going on for a half an hour. Half an hour singing this song. Uh, that was so spectacular. I'll never forget that in my life. I think what came into my heart at that time, mm -hmm. you know, the samskara. So, yeah, you know, I just want to live for however long I have to be here in this mundane world where there is kirtan, real kirtan, mm -hmm. real kirtaniyas, real bhavuk bhaktas, bhavuk and rasik. Bhaktas. That's my own prayer. <laughs> so, so anyway, we cannot do that. We can only imitate. But even imitation of a good thing is good, Prabhupada said. <laughs> you know. So in that regard, one of the greatest kirtaniyas that ever was in the Gaudiya Math yeah. is this personality. Shiva Akinchana Krishnadas Babaji Maharaj, who I was very fortunate to meet a few times while Prabhupada was on the planet. His samadhi is at Pavan Sarovra near Nandagaon. The samadhi is there, he used to stay there. And uh, Pavan Sarovra is the place where uh, cows were going into the pond and drinking in there, not far from the hill of Nandagam. So Srila Kinchan Krishnadas Babaji, his picture is there. Um, actually, let me just connect my Wi-Fi and we definitely have to hear him because I'm sure that there are, that there are definitely um, a video, or audio at least, audio, for sure, there's audio. And, um, okay, I'm connected. Okay. <coughs> ah, Maha Mantra and Kirtans. This is the picture at his samadhi. This is exactly how he looked. Wow. You know, we've heard about, we heard so much of his kirtans in this town, but I never saw him. Oh, yay. Okay. The same remember melody that. I yeah. just sang. Yeah, same yeah, melody. Yeah. There's one where he came to Iskam in that early period. Because when Prabhupada was there, sometimes he'd come. Uh -huh. He was very close with Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj, uh -huh. very close with, with uh, Gurudev. Uh -huh. He was present doing kirtan when Prabhupada took sannyas. Uh -huh. 
He was present doing kirtan when Srila Prabhupada departed. Ah. I was sitting right behind him. Mm -hmm. I was sitting behind him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was very cold that night. That particular year is quite cold in the evening. And we were going to sit the whole evening through, you know. And then in the morning, bring on Palinquin Prabhupada, which happened. And that's when... But Gurudev was also there. Gurudev was right nearby, sitting the whole night, and everyone chanting, chanting, and Prabhupada is on the Vyasa sun. And so it was very cold, and I had, you know, a couple of layers of clothing, but I had a, one of these Lal Imli, kind of thick, gray-colored woolen chadars, you know. And Krishna Babaji was sitting like that, you know, with very thin cloth, no kurta, you know. And so I thought I should give him my chakra. So he's like in front of me. And so I like, tapped him on the shoulder and I offered him the chatter. He turned around and he went. <laughs> and you know who came up to me at that time? Bhagavat Maharaj, who was at that time Bhagavat Brahmachari. Mm -hmm. He said, he saw what had happened. He said, don't ask him, just put it on him. Oh, nice. So then I took my chatter and draped it around his shoulders. Oh, nice. And he accepted it. Wow. He didn't look back. And so all night long, he used that chatter. I had that chatter, but one time, one time what happened was that that chatter was in my luggage on Pan Am Airways when I flew to America and my luggage got lost. Oh. So I lost oh. that shutter. But that was his prashad. You never got the luggage back? No. Uh -huh. In those days, <laughs> they, didn't a lot of <laughs> they didn't have the computer tracking and all right, that, you right. know. Okay. And then they went out of business anyway, Pan Am. You know? right. So, you know, uh, the first time that I met him, was the first time when I came to India in 1975. Maharaj was also there in 1975 in Mayapur. On the same airplane. And uh, so I remember that when Srila Prabhupada arrived and, you know, in those first couple of days, he was upstairs in the Chandradaya Mandir, which was, I think, three floors. One, two, three. You know, and then the bottom level, ground level, was the temple room. So Prabhupada had to walk up the stairs and go up to his room. So one time I was just like, I'm going to walk up the stairs. <laughs> just like, see if I can, mm. how far I can get, you know, because there were guards and everything. So I got up to, I think, second level. And there was a bunch of Indian, younger persons. They weren't dressed as devotees, but they were surrounding this one white-clad elderly man who was kind of leaning against the railing. And uh, when I came up, I, I, I was wondering who he is, you know. And then they started saying to me, Oh, this is Krishnadas Babaji Maharaj. He is topmost, Parahansa Vaishnava, you know. And Krishnadas Babaji was so absorbed. And this was something very common with him. He would just be saying, Oh, laughing and saying, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, like this. That's what he was doing. In his life, barely anyone ever saw him sleep. Or even barely eating. Occasionally he would eat something. He was like a avadut. He would just wander everywhere. Even, didn't matter which Gaudiya Mutt, he would just go and he would be there. So he was always... Srila Sridhar Maharaj, you know, he, he came there quite often. Mm. And so his whole preaching, even though he actually knew English, he was an educated person, but his whole preaching was the Mahamantra. Whatever donations anyone would give him, he would print stickers of the Mahamantra and put them up in the trains and here and there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He realized and and uh, there's a story that Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj tells about him. That 
this was, you know, during the time of Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And Srila Sridhar Maharaj was posted in charge of the Delhi temple that they were opening at that time, the Delhi Gaudiya Mark temple. So, uh, this personality who was not yet Babaji, Babaji Vesh, I actually don't know the history of who he took Babaji Vesh from and when. I'm pretty sure it was after the disappearance of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. But from the very beginning, when he was Brahmachari, he was always attached to chanting. Mm. And just chanting and chanting. And he was the type of person that's really qualified to do Nirjan Bhajan. But Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur forbade this, you know. Nirjan means by yourself. Okay? So Srila Sridhar Maharaj wrote a letter to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and he told him, Yes, my god brother, your disciple, such and such. I forget his brahmachari name. Maybe we'll find it when we read from Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Marsh, probably we'll tell. So Srila Sridhar Maharaj said in his letter to Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati that uh, I have brought him back. He was in this jungle of, called Balihati. He was in this jungle area and just doing chanting. But I have recently, I've brought him back to live here in the temple and to engage in the preaching, preaching work, right? So in Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he wrote back and he said, very good. You have done the service of a true friend to him. I do not recognize chanting in the jungles of Balihati to be Krishna Anushilanam, you mm -hmm. know, uh, to be uh, favorable. favorable, right, you know. Anukuru Krishna Anushilanam. Mm -hmm. By bringing him back and engaging him in the preaching work, you have done the work of a real friend. So, you know, that was like a little chastisement from mm -hmm. Srila Prabhupada. But the fact of the matter is that he was bound in this life, in his life. Do, to do just that. Yeah. And so he was a kirtaniya par excellence. I mean, he would just sit with the, with the Radanga on his own and just go on and on and on, chanting and chanting kirtan, sometimes chanting his japa, sitting up all night long, chanting, you know. So everybody had the highest regard for him, mm -hmm. and he had a very close relationship with our Srila Prabhupada, mm -hmm. you know. So I saw him at that time in 75. Not only that, but also he came to Vrindavan when Prabhupada had the big installation, you know, uh, in 75, the same year. So when we were first saw him in Mayapur and then in Vrindavan. And uh, also I stayed in Vrindavan. When all the Western devotees went back, I requested to stay because Prabhupada wanted three men from each zone. Or was it six men, actually? He had a plan that he wanted six men from each zone to stay in India for six months and then rotate with others from the same zone like that. So I just, uh, Rupa Nuga was kind of in charge of that. I said, you know, Prabhupada wants this and I'm already here, so I just want to stay. So he said, okay. Mm -hmm. So then I got involved in uh, the deity worship to Krishna Balaram. Actually, I was serving the small deities of Radha Shama Sundar, the small ones. Every morning, bathing, dressing, doing the puja, the archan, you know. And it was just after the temple was opened. So now, little by little, all the village people in the bridge city started coming you know, to see this Westerners temple. You know. So Srila Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj also came and stayed for a while. And Prabhupada's sister was also there for a while. She was cooking every day, mm -hmm. the midday offering, Pishima. Actually, her name is Bhavatarani. Bhavatarani. She, her initiated name. And, uh, and I remember seeing Krishna Swamiji. And he would be standing behind everyone. You know, like that elevated area right in front of the altar there where Prabhupada's Vyasa San and then the three altars. Mm -hmm. But he'd be like the far rear and everybody would be in front of him. And I'm looking at him. So I was looking at him and he's just standing there. His eyes were like jewels sparkling. But his moods, 
we looked so deeply absorbed and grave, you know. So um, we will hear uh, the glorification of this personality and then also Bhakti, Bhakti Kumud Santa Goswami Maharaj. There's also a video of him. Of him? Yeah. Really? Uh, he was a great Kirtan, yeah. Ma Santa Maharaj? Yeah. Really? Yes. Do you remember in this gun they used to play um, uh, Krishna Das? Um, they used to play him uh -huh. on the sound, but also they played this boy, Hari Krishna Das. Do you remember him? It was a little boy in Mayapur. He came to New Vrindavan. He came to New Vrindavan? Yeah. Little Hari Krishna. Yeah. He oh, he was a Kirtaniya. He was a phenomenal. Oh, I know him. He was, he was there in Mayapur when I was yeah. there. Yeah. When yes. I heard him, I thought, okay, that's Kirtan of a whole different other category. You know, when they played him in the temple, I was like, all the devotees listened to him. The, we had the tape recorders, I remember back then, you know. The tape recorders, they would just sit there and listen to this boy, this kid. Yeah. Sing like the nightingale of nightingales. Yeah, yeah. Going he used to up sing in thing. front of Prabhupada. Yeah, and so when I see him, I kind of see a little Hari. I don't know what happened to him. Do you know what happened to him, Hari? No. no. But his recordings are still there. Yeah. I don't know what happened to him. I don't him. know what happened, but yeah, I've never heard anybody sing the Hari Krishna Maha Mantra like that boy. Yeah, that was really nice. Yeah. Really sweet. Hare, yeah, like there they say, you do like that. <laughs> But they were like born, these Kirtaniyas are born in Mahaprabhu's movement, you know what I mean? I think it might be the Russians, it's the Russians. This is who? The Lord Santa Goswami. On his Vyas Puja day in Calcutta. Wow. Is this uh, Krishna Atanji? No, it's Santa Maharaj. Santa Maharaj. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 It's all historic footage. Bhakti Balabha Chirta Maharaj, his, his, his uh, either appearance or disappearance is coming. Was, it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah, it's coming. Now he is quite the Kirtan. Oh. oh, he is like. And Wait, I was in his Kirtan. Yeah, you oh. told me you learned the style oh, of him going God. up and up from him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, really, actually. Yeah. Yeah. We can find his Kirtan. Oh, his Kirtan is. Right. Bhakti Balabha Chirta Maharaj, yeah. We played him. Oh, there's a video of him also going into his Guru Maharaj's room mm -hmm. and crying and weeping over his bed. You're going to see him, he, the way he goes into this room, he starts looking mm. for any paraphernalia of his Guru. Oh, and he's just holding really? You've seen the video? Oh, yeah. They ha his disciple was here, uh -huh. Rajesh Mishra Prabhu. Okay. He came from India and uh -huh. he shared us these treasures of his Guru. Huh? Yes. And they were just, I've never seen, I didn't know much about him. Yes. But he showed me he said, this is his Vyas Puja offering. And they, they, they show him, the devotees are holding him because he's elderly. Yes. So he's holding and all he's doing is just weeping and weeping and crying on looking at the bed of his guru. Oh. And then they bring him to the bed because he can't move so much. Yeah. And so he places his hands on the bed of his guru and he's just weeping and weeping and weeping. So I've never seen like that uh, Vipra Lamba Ras for guru that a disciple had like he had it. It oh, was just... Yeah. Was, is, is he, he the one that went into a trance for yeah. many years? Yes. Yeah, but yeah. also who I'm going to read about right now from Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Maharaj, also Bhakti Kumad Santa Maharaj was on life support for a number of years. Oh, yeah. I see. Completely wow. gone, you know. Wow. In Goloka. 
Okay, so um, this is Srila Bharti Maharaja's uh, glorification of him from his book, My Beloved Masters. Oh, very nice. Um, <clears throat> so it begins with his early days and joining the mutt. This is his picture here. Bless. Yes, we saw him. Very effulgent. Yes. Can, we, can the audience see? Yes. Yeah. She put up the Maharaj is watching by the way. Oh, Jai. Avadut Maharaj ki Jai. Dandavat Pranams. Dandavat Pranams. Uh, there's also one. Wait, let me check one thing. Okay. One second. I'm calling my disciple Shama Sundari, mm. who's up in Seattle, uh -huh. to tell her that we're broadcasting and then she can. Okay. Jai Radhe. Jai Radhe. Hare Krishna. Listen, I'm, I'm now giving class. And you can see it on Facebook. And uh, Madhavi, uh, Devi does. Yeah, Madhavi Devi will tell you which Facebook to go to. I don't know if you're friends with her yet or not. How does she do that to get on this? Uh, actually, I will try to find you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now you can connect with this live Facebook class and listen. Okay. We're speaking about Srila Bhakti Kumud Santa Goswami Maharaj and Srila Akinshana Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj Thank tonight you. from Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Maharaj's memories. Okay? Oh, tell, so, tell my name. Madhavi Devi Dasi. Madhavi Devi Dasi. And uh, the, the picture, it's uh, Krishna with his... Uh, coward boys on a swing. Yes. Oh, Krishna with the coward oh. boys on a swing. You see I that? See I do. Okay. okay. Yeah, you can add her and then you can go to that place, okay? Okay. So I'm hanging up now to continue okay. the class. Okay. Okay. Hare Krishna. All right. So. It's easier when you don't have a picture. So everybody. <coughs> Actually, best. Definitely. Yes, it is. So Sri Srimad Bhakti Kumud Santa Goswami Maharaj, he appeared in the village of Narma, West Bengal. He was given the name Radha Raman Das after his family's worshipable deity, Sri Radha Raman. His father, Sri Vaikuntanath Rai, was a Jamandar, a landowner, as well as a practicing astrologer and Ayurvedic doctor. Being highly impressed by his first encounter with the Gaudiamat preachers, he invited them to stay for some days in his home. And after regularly extending such invitations to devotees, Sri Vaikuntanath Roy became closely acquainted with the Gaudiamat. The preachers of Sri Gaudiamat were so pleased with Sri Vaikuntanath Roy's service, the father, and his hospitality that they would stay only at his house during their visits to his town only at his house. Because he was not particularly attached to the opulence enjoyed by landowners in that era, <clears throat> he would spend most of his time treating patients and calculating ast astrological charts. He rendered profuse, wholehearted assistance to the sannyasis and brahmacharis, collecting funds for the Sri Navadvip Dham Parikrama held by Sri Chaitanya Mat. He had a potent ambition for seeking his spiritual welfare. And so, despite his worldly opulence and landowner affluence, he never hesitated to personally collect donations. He firmly believed that the association of sadhus is the only means of attaining well-being in this human life. Sri Srimad Bhakti Hridoy Van Goswami Maharaj and Sri Pranavananda Brahmachari, who later became Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj, they once visited Sri Vaikuntanath Roy's home to collect provisions for the upcoming Navadita Parikrama. Sri Vaikuntanath Roy offered them 108 rupees worth of silver coins in Panami, and Sri Radharaman Das and his brother Krishna Das received the good fortune to serve them. 
During his five-day stay, Sri Pranavananda Brahmachari observed that Sri Radharaman Das spent the majority of his time sitting peacefully in the temple room, either hearing Harikata or performing Kirtan. This the son, right. Radharaman Das. So one day, after Sri Pranavananda Brahmachari saying, Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, mm -hmm. he and the boy, Sri Radharaman Das, discussed the meaning of the Kirtan. Sri Pranavananda Brahmachari was amazed to see an ardent love for Kata and Kirtan in such a young boy. He said to Sri Vaikuntanath Roy, Your son's behavior is rather atypical for a child. His natural attraction to spiritual matters amazes me. We would be greatly pleased to have him stay in our mat. There he can gain both spiritual knowledge and a regular education. Will you allow him to come with us? Sri Vaikuntanath Roy replied, If he agrees to your proposal, you may surely take him with you. I have no objection. Sri Pranavananda Brahmachari asked Sri Radharaman Das, Will you come with us to live with the sannyasis and brahmacharis in our Kolkata Mat, where you can receive both spiritual and material educations? Yes, Sri Radharaman Das immediately answered. There you will have to serve sadhus all of the time. Just as you are doing here, Sri Pranavananda Brahmachari told him. That will increase my good fortune, he replied with a youthful enthusiasm. And in this way, Sri Radharaman Das agreed and accompanied the two visiting Vaishnavas back to the Mat at number one Ultadanga Road, Kolkata, which at the time was a rented apartment. And that's where Prabhupada met Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati mm -hmm. the first time. Wow. Yes. Sri Radharaman Das. What? I'm going to give a date. But most of the early 20s, 1920s, something like that. Because that Alta, Alta Danga Prabhupada went there in 1922, right? In yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it doesn't give a date for, mm -hmm. for this. <clears throat> so Sri, Sri Radharaman Das's mother, Sri Ratnamayi Devi, was a considerably devotional woman. He was her third and youngest son and had been raised amid wealth. Before he left for the Mat, she appropriately instructed him about his future stay in the austere atmosphere of his guru's residence. She hugged him, kissed his forehead, and said with tears in her eyes, Baba, your purpose is noble. Make accomplishing this purpose your life's only goal. What parents? Sri yeah. Vaikuntanath Roy accompanied his son to Kolkata where he had darshan of Srila Prabhupada, of Bhaktisiddhanta oh. Prabhupada, and talked to him about the boy. Srila Prabhupada asked Sri Radharaman Das, so, koka? koka? Koka means kid like kiddo. Mm -hmm. So, kiddo, <coughs> will you be able to stay here? Yes, yes, the boy said, I will definitely be able to stay. Upon joining the mat, the boy enrolled in a nearby school these are all good memories for Gore, because he grew yeah. up in the temple. <laughs> <laughs> so upon joining the Mutt, the boy enrolled in a nearby school, the New Indian High School. Tell them that we'll go to my page. Okay. How do you do that? You want to tell them? Yeah. Haribo, uh, it's Malavi. Uh, can you go to uh, my page on Facebook so you're going to have access to the class? Yes. Okay, great. Haribo. Okay, so upon joining the Mutt, the boy enrolled in a nearby school, the New Indian High School, <clears throat> and thus spent his time between his services in the Mutt and his studies. Sometimes Sri Radharaman Brahmachari washed the clothes of the, accompany of the accomplished sannyasis and brahmacharis, and sometimes he cleaned their rooms. Other times he cleaned the temple room with great delight. The devotees of the Mutt were captivated by the boy's enthusiasm and his sincere inclination to serve. Also, Sri Radharaman's voice was very sweet. He would sit with the devotees and sing kirtan with them, heightening their ecstasy. One day, after Sri Radharaman Brahmachari had completed his studies at the New Indian High School, Srila Prabhupada told the sannyasi and brahmachari disciples crowded around him, When I see how sincerely and quickly this boy performs his services, it occurs to me that if he were to spend his life in the mutt, 
I could delegate many services to him without worry. But since he is young and has just finished his schooling, it is up to his parents whether he continues to stay here. Sometime later, Sri Vaikuntanath Rai visited the Kalkata Mutt and asked his son, Do you want to continue your studies? If you want to acquire a higher education, then I am happy to talk to Srila Prabhupada and make arrangements for you to do so. Sri Radharaman Brahmachari said, I have heard from Srila Prabhupada, Jara Vidya Jato Mayar Vaibhav, that material knowledge is simply the opulent manifestation of Bhagavan's illusory potency. Also, Thakur Bhaktivinod has stated in Sharanagati, Vidyar Gorave Brahmi Deshe Deshe Dana Uparjana Kori. In the pride of having acquired worldly knowledge, I simply wandered from one country to another, accumulating material wealth. Furthermore, this is the boy talking to Prabhupada. Furthermore, Sri Chaitanya Bhagwat mentions Adikanda. Pade keno loka Krishna bhakti janibare se jadi nahilo tabe vidyaya ki kore. Why do people study? In order to know Krishna bhakti. But what is the use of acquiring knowledge if that devotion does not arise? So Sri Radharaman Brahmachari continued Because I have heard and taken to heart the true purport of these statements and other similar declarations found in scriptures, I am determined not to waste my invaluable time in this human life on acquiring higher education, material comforts, or earning a livelihood. I want to obtain spiritual knowledge and thereby fulfill the true purpose of living in the mutt. After Sri Radharaman Brahmachari consulted with Sri Pranavananda Brahmachari, Bhakti Pramod Purimaraj, Wow. Regarding his future, he decided that according to his current interest and inclination, it would be best to study Sanskrit under Srila Prabhupada's disciple, Sri Kavya Vyakarana Tirtha Gaur Das Pandit, in order to comprehend the Gaudiya Vaishnava scriptural canon. Sri Radharaman Brahmachari submitted this proposal to Srila Prabhupada, who gave his permission. Thus, Sri Radharaman Brahmachari relocated from Calcutta to Sri Chaitanya Mutt and Sri Dham Mayapur. Sometime later, <coughs> when Srila Prabhupada held a grand event to showcase the Sat Shiksha Pradarshini exhibition in Sri Dham Mayapur in the year 1930, hear that Maharaj? Mm -hmm. He ordered Sri Radharaman Brahmachari, who was then absorbed in studying Sanskrit grammar, to dedicate himself to the services related to the exhibition. Now you know what these were? Our Prabhupada talked about that. Dioramas. Is, huh? Dioramas. Yes, a diorama exhibit, exhibition in Sri Dham Mayapur. Oh. So, as per Srila Prabhupada's instruction, Sri Radharaman Brahmachari would deliver scripturally sound explanations to the guests regarding the exhibition's many displays. And unbeknownst to him, Srila Prabhupada listened in on these explanations. And when Sri Radharaman Brahmachari's mother, father, and two elder brothers came to see the exhibition, Srila Prabhupada praised the boy profusely. He told Sri Vaikuntanath Rai and Sri Ratnamai Devi, <coughs> Your youngest son has accrued substantial qualifications for someone his age. At present he is studying Sanskrit grammar and sincerely serving the residents of the Dham. So at the exhibition, Sri Radharaman Brahmachari spoke with his family members for some time about Srila Prabhupada's glories, about the legacy of Srila Prabhupada's teachings, the speciality of the Gaudiya Mat, and the profound purpose of the exhibition's themes. So here he is preaching to his family members and glorifying Prabhupada and the Gaudiya Mat and all this exhibition. So then he requested them to invite good fortune to their lives by taking shelter of Srila Prabhupada's lotus feet. Anyway. Sri Vaikuntanath Rai and Sri Ratnamai Devi were rendered speechless by their amazement with their youngest son. Nice. They decided then and there that they and their three sons 
would all become Srila Prabhupada's disciples. Srila <laughs> Prabhupada showered his mercy on Sri Vaikuntanath Rai, his wife Sri Ratnamai Devi and their sons, Sri Radha Shyam Rai, Sri Radha Vinod Rai, and Sri Radha Raman Rai by giving them all Harinam. <coughs> he asked Sri Radha Raman Brahmachari's parents, Do you object to Radha Raman continuing to stay in the mat? Sri Vaikuntanath Rai and Shiratnamai Devi replied, Please consider this boy as having been offered for the service of your lotus feet. So after some time, Sri Radharaman Brahmachari was transferred to Sri Chaitanya Mat in Mayapur, where the daily newspaper Dainik Nadia Prakash was printed. <clears throat> One day it so happened that there was no paper stock for the following day's issue and the rainy weather was making it difficult to procure a new supply. So Sri Pranavananda Brahmachari was the paper's editor at that time. In Bhakti Pramod Puri, he was the editor of that daily yeah. newspaper, and the weekly, wow. and the monthly. Amazing. <laughs> yes. So, so Pranavananda Brahmachari informed Srila Prabhupada about the situation and asked him what to do. So Srila Prabhupada asked, Is there anybody who can bring paper from our Bhagwat press in Krishnanagar? So Krishna Nagar is like, I don't know how many miles or kilometers, but a bit of a distance, and it's raining. So Pranavananda Brahmachari mentioned, Radharaman Brahmachari is here, and he will, he will go if you tell him. Srila Prabhupada then ordered Sri Radharaman Brahmachari to go, and the boy immediately left for Krishna Nagar by bicycle. Bicycle, yeah. Mm -hmm. After riding a far distance in the rain, he finally reached his destination. When he collected the paper supply, the devotees at Bhagwat Press bound it to the back of his bicycle. The knots they made, however, were quite loose, mm -hmm. and the entire bundle of paper fell to the ground during his return journey. Oh. Sri Radharaman Brahmachari immediately removed his dhoti, which measured approximately five meters, and replaced it with his uttariya, his upper cloth, which measured only two meters. Using the dhoti, he very nicely bound the paper, secured it to the bike, and carefully brought it to Mayapur. Upon Sri Radharaman Brahmachari's return, Srila Prabhupada was informed about the situation and he praised the boy, acknowledging that although he was very young, he displayed great astuteness in a difficult situation. What a personality. Yeah. Yeah. Now, receiving mantra diksha. When Srila Prabhupada saw for himself how skillful Sri Radharaman was during the Sat Siksha Pradarshini exhibition in Sri Mayapur, he included his name in the list of devotees that he would send to Dhaka, that's in East Bengal, Bangladesh, to hold an exhibition there. When Sri Radharaman Brahmachari found out about this, he appealed to Sri Srimad Bhakti Vivek Bharati Goswami Maharaj, my grammar studies have already been paused during the exhibition in Sri Mayapur. If I go to Dhaka, they will practically cease altogether. You know, Sanskrit grammar. So when Srila Bharati Goswami Maharaj put the matter before Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada called for Sri Radharaman Brahmachari and told him, to think that we must first obtain <coughs> some qualification before attempting to serve Sri Hari simply invites obstacles in our lives. Ah. Who knows? Read that again. Yes. To think that we must first obtain some qualification before attempting to serve Sri Hari, it simply invites obstacles in our life, lives. Who knows what may happen in the time spent pursuing perfection? Our time in this human form of life is momentary. We cannot trust our breath that it will last. Our breath. Then he said, the rice paddy in the field must be dried while the sun is still shining. It is best to seize whatever opportunities for Hari Seva may arise. Your qualification will increase more by serving the Lord than by independently pursuing grammatical knowledge. Only a life led under guidance brings auspiciousness for a spiritual seeker residing in an ashram. Sri Radharaman Brahmachari took Srila Prabhupada's merciful instruction to heart and he fixed it as the main instruction guiding him to the path of spiritual welfare. Sri Radharaman Brahmachari was thus 
always faithfully preoccupied with various services. And in 1934, at Bag Bazar, Gaudiya in Calcutta, Srila Prabhupada granted Sri Radharaman Brahmachari Mantra Diksha. So that's two years before his departure, Srila Prabhupada. And what year was he born? Did they say what year? No, we don't have that. Okay. But I, I feel that he was probably a teenager mm -hmm. at this time. <clears throat> so now the next section is titled, The Praise and the Criticism of Ordinary People is Meant for Their Own Sense Enjoyment. Mm. The devotees of Sri Madhva Goryamat in Dhaka once wrote to Srila Prabhupada and requested him to send one kirtaniya for the mat. So, <clears throat> knowing Sri Radharaman Brahmachari to be an exceptional kirtaniya, Srila Prabhupada asked him if he could make the journey on his own. Sri Radharaman Brahmachari confidently affirmed that he could. And accepting the order of his Gurudev, he departed on his journey for Dhaka, which required him to travel first by steamship and then by road. So, you know, he must have been probably at least 16, 18 years old by that time. So being the first passenger, right, yeah. so, you know, he... he accepted the order of his Gurudev, he departed on his journey for Dhaka, which required him to travel first by steamship and then by road. Because when you go, I went one time from Mayapur all the way to Dhaka, over land. They have many rivers. Yeah. You have to travel by boat. So, <clears throat> being the first passenger to arrive at the steamship, Sri Radharaman Brahmachari took a seat next to one of the ship's windows. After some time, the ship slowly began to fill with passengers. This is a great pastime. Wait till you hear this. The passengers who arrived after, they told him, Move over. Why are you sitting near the window anyway? You are a small child. You can sit anywhere. Fresh air is required for old people. Why have you taken this seat? Get up from here and go sit elsewhere. Another person commented, Nowadays, people give birth to a child, and without taking responsibility for looking after him, they leave him in the mud. <laughs> These children then become sadhus due to laziness and their aversion to work. So after hearing these comments, Sri Radharaman Brahmachari quietly got up from his seat, stood near the ship's entrance so that no one would be bothered further. Seeing this, everybody became satisfied and they remained peaceful. Approximately 10 minutes after he had moved from the window seat, an announcement came over the loudspeaker. Everyone, please be attentive. The ocean is very rough today, and we have no control over the ship. We are in perilous danger. Anything can happen. So everyone, please remember God and pray to Him for our safety. Hearing this, one of the passengers, an old man, who had previously complained about Sri Radharaman Brahmachari, began crying and lamented, My daughter is to be married, and I am carrying her dowry and her wedding ornaments. If something happens to our ship, what will happen to my daughter's marriage? Everything will be ruined. Another passenger responded, Didn't you hear the announcement? They are saying to remember God. So this is not the appropriate time to speak such things. <laughs> the old man replied, God will not listen to us because we never did his bhajan. But surely he will listen to this young sadhu. Although he's very young, he has understood the true value of life. And after this, all the passengers who had previously complained about Sri Radharaman Brahmachari <laughs> forcibly sat him down among them and requested him to pray for their safety. Seen in a movie. <laughs> he replied, I have heard from my Guru Maharaj that the Lord only hears the prayers of his surrendered devotees. As I am not yet surrendered to him, he will not even hear me what to speak or fulfill any request I may submit. However, my Guru Maharaj has also mentioned that we should always perform Nam Sankirtan. There are, therefore, I can chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and all of you can repeat it in Kirtan, but I cannot guarantee that God will hear or save us. When the passengers accepted his proposal, they all began to perform Kirtan. After some time, the ship safely arrived at its destination. 
Srila Sante Goswami Raj often mentioned this pastime. And in doing so, he taught us that both the criticism and the praise of ordinary people have absolutely no value. And we should therefore never become affected by whatever they may speak. Such people praise and criticize only for their own sense and joy. Next section. The deep vision of great personalities. Once, Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj and my Paramarad Yatama Guru Maharaj, Srimad Srimad Bhakti Doyata Madhav Goswami Maharaj, they were staying in the Madras, Gaudiya Mat, as Brahmacharis. My Guru Maharaj was then known as Sri Hayagriva Brahmachari. Although they were Brahmacharis and not sannyasis, they were accepted as experienced seniors because they sincerely followed Srila Prabhupada. During their stay, Sri Radharaman Brahmachari noticed that a particular Brahmachari refused to mix with the other residents of the Mutt, and he hardly spoke with anybody. He instead sought solitude wherever he could find it in order to focus on his reading and chanting. So sensing something suspicious about these activities, Sri Radharaman Brahmachari approached Sri Hayagriva Brahmachari and told him of his concerns. He said, Prabhu, although this Brahmachari is chanting and reading a great deal, and he's avoiding gossip, I feel that something is wrong. Can you please investigate? Sri Hayagriva Brahmachari understood the legitimate, legitimate reason for Sri Radharaman Brahmachari's concern. <clears throat> and afterwards he called for the Brahmachari and he asked him, I've heard that you do not associate with any other residents of the Mutt, but to speak of joking with them or sitting with them to take prasad. Why is this? And the Brahmachari replied, I do not wish to become involved in gossip. And that is why I prefer to keep to myself. Sri Hayagri Brahmachari said, I think it would be better for you to sit with them and develop relationships. Try to lead your life in a natural way, as the other residents of the Mutt do. Sometimes, even if you have to joke and you engage in gossip with them, still it is not a problem. Why? Because there is something to learn in each and every activity of the devotees. So feeling utterly confused, the Brahmachari replied, Prabhu, although you are very senior to me, you are instructing me to do the opposite of what I have heard from other senior Vaishnavas. I do not want you to feel that as if I am challenging you, but Sriman Mahaprabhu has said not to listen to or speak gossip. But you are asking me to indulge in material talks with Brahmacharis, if required. <laughs> this is greatly puzzling. Shihai <laughs> Griva Brahmachari then explained himself, listen properly. Listen. Presently, you are residing in this mud only with your body and not with your mind. Mm -hmm. If you will not heed my words, then after some time your body will also go from here. You will surely return to your home. But if you follow what I have suggested, at least you will continue to stay here by body. And then gradually your mind will come to stay in the mud as well. Therefore, be peaceful. Please try to follow what I have told you. This instance shows that although Sri Radharaman Brahmachari was considerably young, he was Dura Darshi, capable of seeing what will come in the future, beyond the present circumstances. While ordinary persons hold an external conception of proper and improper conduct, the perception of those who are Dura Darshi extends beyond outer appearances. Okay. Such persons can see clearly what is deep inside the hearts of others, as well as what will become of them in the future. Both my Guru Maharaj and Sri Radharaman Brahmachari could ascertain that because this Brahmachari's <coughs> mind was not fixed in being a servant of Sri Hari, Guru, and Vaishnavas, he would quickly tire of his rigorous sadhana and leave the mud. Sometime later, that Brahmachari received a letter but instead of having it sent to the mutt, he had the sender address it to a nearby Grihasta family. Seeing that a letter had come from for a resident of the mutt, that family explained the situation to Sri Hayagriva Brahmachari and handed him the letter. 
Upon reading it, <coughs> Sri Hai Griva Brahmachari learned that the Brahmachari had previously sent a letter to his mother informing her that he would soon return home and that she should therefore arrange both a job and a wife for him. The letter Sri Hai Griva Brahmachari had received was the mother's reply in which she accepted the responsibility and told him to return quickly. Shortly after the letter's arrival, the Brahmachari left the mat. <clears throat> so although absolutely no indications of his mental unrest were visible uh, when he was staying in the mat, both Sri Radharaman Brahmachari and my Guru Maharaj understood the situation very clearly. Due to some scars that he had received as a result of staying in the mat, this Brahmachari later accepted the real truth. He returned to the mat around the age of 65. Wow. And remembering That's the Dura Darshita, remembering this Dura Darshita of Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj, he eventually accepted sannyas from him. Wow. Mm. Ah, what a story. Wow, huh? yeah. Yeah. Now the next section is titled On Addressing God Brothers and Other Vaishnavas as Prabhu. Once, Sri Radharaman Brahmachari asked Srila Prabhupada, why God Brothers refer to each other as Prabhu, with a capital P. And Srila Prabhupada gave the following response. It is said, Guru Seva Khoi Manya Apnara. The servant of one's Guru is to be revered. According to this notion, we address all of our God Brothers, both senior and junior, as Prabhu so that we may cultivate a sense of being humbler than a blade of grass. <clears throat> if a person considers himself to be a Vaishnava and others to be junior or less advanced than him, he nurtures only mundane egotism. Yeah, true. In the realm of spirituality, if we see each other as the servants of our guru, the notion that another is inferior to or less qualified than us will never enter our hearts. Again, in the realm of spirituality, if we see each other as the servants of our guru, then the notion that another is inferior to or less qualified than us will never enter our hearts. Then we will not have a chance to feel malice or disregard for others. <clears throat> this is the secret of addressing each other as Prabhu. This is still Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati talking. If one wishes to relinquish gross egotism and become a servant of Sri Gurudev, one must not regard Sri Gurudev's servants in terms of senior and junior. As the scriptures state, Tad Britya Britya Britasya Brityam Itimam Smaraloka Nata. O Lord of the Universe, I wish to forever remember that I am but the servant of the servant of the servant of your servant. I think this is King Kulashekar from his prayers. <clears throat> we must deeply internalize this conception. In this way, Scripture ordains that the servants of Sri Guru, and indeed all Vaishnavas, are to be addressed as Prabhu. Next section, his courage to accept the truth. Srila Prabhupada left this world shortly after the end of Sri Radharaman Brahmachari's childhood. Yeah, so, I mean, he must have been probably 18 or something, 20 years old by that time. So at that time, Sri Radharaman Brahmachari's heart was broken upon seeing the regretful state of the Gaudiya Math organization in the wake of Srila Prabhupada's departure. Since he was still quite young, he felt it would be better if he were to return to his family instead of enduring the regrettable situation in which he found himself. Mm. Thinking in this way, <coughs> Sri Radharaman Brahmachari expressed his desire to his father, Sri Vaikuntanath Prabhu, who accepted his proposal and welcomed him home. Hearing the news of Sri Radharaman Brahmachari's departure from the Mutt, my Guru Maharaj arrived at his home, and he asked Sri Vaikuntanath Prabhu, you are the disciple of Srila Prabhupada. Even if your son is asking to return home, how can you allow it? Sri Vaikuntanath Prabhu replied, Actually, I do not wish for him to leave the mat, but at the same time I don't want him to be discouraged 
and think that there is no one to support him due to his having chosen another path. I don't want him to feel abandoned or unentitled to his inheritance. For this reason I have allowed him to return home. If you prefer him to remain a brahmachari and return to the mutt, then he can go with you if he agrees to it. I have no objection, and I would in fact be pleased by this. Nice. Guru Maharaj then discussed the matter with Sri Radharaman Brahmachari, and they left together for the mutt shortly afterward. Although my Guru Maharaj was not a sannyasi at that time, he requested Sri Srimad Bhakti Vichar Jajavar Goswami Maharaj to give sannyas to Sri Radharaman Brahmachari. Srila Jajavar Goswami Maharaj accepted the proposal and gave him sannyas in the Kir Chor Gopinath temple in Raymuna. Mm. Since that time, he has been known as Sri Srimad Bhakti Kumud Santa Goswami Maharaj. A very young age. We, have, we had never heard about this incident from anyone, including our Guru Maharaj, until Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj himself spoke about it during Vraj Mandala Prikama in Vrindavan, as well as in our Sri Chaitanya Gauri Mat in Chandigarh. Srila Maharaj would often declare, quote, I have been tremendously benefited by the affectionate guidance of Pujapad Madhav Maharaj. He saved my life. What would have happened to me had I stayed at home? He saved me from great danger. Mm -hmm. Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj and my Guru Maharaj were among the many disciples of Srila Prabhupada who stayed in Shyamananda Gaudiya Mutt in Medinapur, Bengal. Although Guru Maharaj collected many donations and purchased the property for constructing that Mutt, he did everything in the name of Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj and not his own. Such was the affection he had for him. Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj used to say, I am not the master of anything or anyone. I am only a servant. As long as my god brothers accept my service, I will give it. Should they no longer be interested in receiving it, I will see who will give me shelter and I will stay over there. Next section, his magnetic Harikata and Kirtan. <clears throat> Many people would come to the Mutt just to hear Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj's beautiful Harikata and Kirtans. Once he accompanied Guru Maharaj to Jammu with a preaching party, and although he sang Kirtans in Bengali, a language that the people of Jammu do not understand, many people were nonetheless attracted. Everyone in attendance appreciated his kirtans so much that they would repeatedly request him to sing. And so he sang a kirtan about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Varna Chora Kotam Mat Matai Chalve Re. O oh, you who have stolen the complexion of Srimati Radharani, you have intoxicated us. Where now do you wish to take us? So after returning from the daily Nagar Sankirtans held during the program, he would sing the following song, which dripped with rasa as it emanated from his lotus lips. Nagara Brahmiya Amar Gora Elogare Gora Elogare Amar Nitai Elogare So this song, he's quoting two verses from this song. We also have this song in our songbook because Gurudev also introduced that this song is sung after you come either from Parikrama, back to the Mutt, or you come from Nagar Sankirtan, you know. And what does this song mean? Nagara Brahmiya Amar Gora Elo Gare. After roaming throughout the towns and villages, my Gor has come back home. Where's Gor's home? Where's Gor's home? Quickly. What, what, what? Gauranga Where home? is Goranga Mahaprabhu's home that he came back to after wandering in all the villages doing kirtan? I don't know exactly the name of the home. But wait. But they Mayapur. 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 Oh, yeah. Mayapur. Okay. Mayapur. Yog Pete. I was like, yeah. okay, Yog, Yog Pete. Pete. Okay. okay, that's why I'm asking you <laughs> yeah, to bring you into this song. Gora Elo I don't know if it was like there, but I was like, home. Okay. <laughs> Gore Elogare Amar Nitai Elogare. Gore has come back home, and my Nitai has come back home. 
Let us on. So sweet. Mm. Dula jari sachi mata gora kole kare. Brushing off the dust from his body, Mother Sachi takes Gora upon her lap. Then Dula jari padmavati nitai kole kare. And brushing off the dust from his body, Mother Padmavati takes Nitai upon her lap. There's a few more verses, but it's not quoted here. So as the preaching party for that trip was quite large, two programs were held each day. Although Srila Maharaj was not proficient in speaking Hindi, his Harikata was simple and easily understandable for all, and it therefore attracted many people. Honoring the requests of the residents of Jammu, he performed kirtan and spoke harikatha twice daily. Nice. Next section, his strictness and his gravity. Whether he was attending a meeting, arranging a festival, or sitting as chairperson to an assembly, Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj was always extremely punctual. We have seen that if he was presiding over a function and someone spoke Harikata beyond the allotted time, Srila Maharaj would immediately interrupt him and terminate his address. <laughs> and if the speaker was junior to Srila Maharaj, he would grab him by the ears and order him to sit down. And to the seniors, he would politely but firmly request them to stop speaking. <laughs> he did not tolerate inattentiveness. Mm. If he observed anyone, whether a brahmachari, sannyasi, lady, child, or whosoever, doing anything besides sincerely hearing during the time of Harikata, he would reprimand that person without giving them a chance to speak, saying, Please leave. You do not know the etiquette of sitting in an assembly of Vaishnavas. Nice. Once a Mataji came to hear Harikata with her grandson, who was approximately one or one and a half years old. When the boy started crying loudly during the kata, she tried to pacify him. Seeing this, Srila Santa Goswami Raj told her, Do not stay in this assembly any longer. Only attentive people who give first priority to Harikata are welcome here, and not anybody else. You think the care of your grandson to be of the utmost importance and Harikata to be secondary? Do you think that this is a place where people can sit and do whatever they want? Our time is very precious and we have no interest in wasting it. Please leave immediately. <laughs> yeah. It's like super grave. If Srila Maharaj ever saw that a person who had dedicated his life to brahmacharya was not following the required rules and regulations, such as shaving on Purnima, he would chastise him and say, Why have you accepted the clothes of a brahmachari? You are only cheating yourself. Stop trying to ruin your life. Simply follow the teachings of our Guru Vargas. Even if you do not understand the purpose of each and every principle, you will be benefited by following them. So I have to make a comment here because I didn't shave on Purnima. Oh, I see. It's practically the first time I never shaved on oh. Purnima in all these years. Mm. Uh, this is current situation. Right. There's okay. some reason for it. I see. Now, the next section is called Establishing Siddhanta in Few Words. Very few words. Once, Srila Santa Goswami Raj hosted a function at his Bihalag Mat in Kolkata. And he invited many different guests to speak. And among the guests were a number of disciples of Srila Prabhupada, including Sri Srimad Bhakti Budev Shoti Goswami Raj and Srila Prabhupada's grand disciples from various Mats such as Pujapad Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj, mm -hmm. and myself, Bharati Bharti Also invited was an old Brahmin university professor from a local college. His face displayed a lack of interest during the assembly. And when it came time for him to deliver his lecture, he spoke Mayavad philosophy, and he declared, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahma along with other different Mayavadi slogans. After the professor finished his speech, he rejoined the other speakers on the stage and continued to look visibly disinterested during any subsequent speeches. <clears throat> when the time came for Sri Santa Goswami Maharaj to give his speech, Srila Maharaj asked, Are you Brahma? The professor answered, Yes, I am. 
Sri Maharaj asked, Then is it true you do not undergo vichar? Any change or any transformation? Correct. I do not. Then with one hand gripping his sannyas danda and the other clenched in a fist, Srila Santa Goswami rose from his chair, charged at the Mayavadi professor, mimicking as if he were going to beat him. Viscerally startled, the old man flinched in sheer terror. Srila Maharaj repeated this two more times, and the man recoiled in fear in both instances. Srila Maharaj declared, you are not Brahma. Brahma is nirvikar. It never undergoes change, never reacts to anything. No one can harm Brahma, and therefore Brahma will never react in any situation. <laughs> by, by becoming Sorry. fearful, just now, you reveal to the entire assembly that you are not Brahma. <laughs> in so few words, Srila Santa Goswami has exposed the old Brahmin's philosophy as false. With the entire assembly, including the children, very loudly laughing at him, the old <laughs> professor felt mortified and he begged Srila Maharaj for forgiveness. Wow. <laughs> well, that's a great story. <laughs> nice. Next is... Well, he got some mercy. Oh, yeah. yeah. He did. <laughs> So next is a, the, the title of the next section. A special meaning of Krishnera Nityadas. Mm. Mm. So you know what Krishnera Nityadas means? Yeah, yeah. eternal uh, uh, servant of Krishna. Right, and mm. which verse is it from? Jivaras uh, Barupoi, Krishna Nityadas, Krishna Tatadashta Shakti, Abey Abey Okay, very good. So the special meaning of Krishnera Nityadas. <clears throat> I have heard Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj speak on his opinion about Sri Chaitanya Dev's teachings to Srila Sanatana Goswami Pad. Jivar Surupahoi Krishnera Nitidas. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila 20, 108. That's easy to remember. Therefore, it is not incorrect to say Jivar Surupahoi Gurur Nitidas. Why have I accepted this point of view? This is Santa Goswami Raj. Because since time immemorial, I have been wandering about the universe in different forms, accepting bodies of the different 8,400,000 species. And only in this lifetime has Krishna manifested himself in front of me as Sri Guru to bless me with everything. Thus, I consider that form, his form as Sri Guru, to be eternally worshipful. When I was preaching in Rangoon, I wrote an article titled Brityar Parichai, The Identity of a Servant, in which I included a poem of mine that expressed the following. The glory of service to Sri Guru Pada Padma exceeds that of service to Sri Krishna. Why? While it is true that the jiva is constitutionally an eternal servant of Sri Krishna, the conditioned soul has forgotten this relationship due to his aversion to him since time in the morning. Sri Sri Guru Dev is the giver of Sambandha Gyan, knowledge of one's eternal relationship with Bhagavan. As one engages everything, body, mind, and words in serving him, he becomes Guru Devatatma, one in spirit with Sri Gurudev. And then, by Sri Gurudev's mercy, the practitioner gradually realizes the purport of the teaching from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi 1.45, Guru Rupe Krishna Kripa Korin Bhakta Gane. In the form of Sri Guru, Krishna bestows his mercy on the devotees. <clears throat> Not to speak of the stage of sadhana bhakti, even in the liberated state, when the soul is situated in his eternal nature, swarup siddhi, none of his efforts bear fruit without the guidance of Sri Sri Guru Deva. Even in the stage of vastu siddhi, the jiva's attainment of Sri Sri Radha Krishna Jugal's service is dependent on the guidance of Sri Guru. What is Vastu Siddhi? Eternal. Uh, Taking uh, birth. 
in Krishna's yeah, Lila. it's like the yes. Siddha Deha. And that's called in Bom Vastu Lila. City. Vastu City. In Bom Lila. Yes. Yeah. In Bom Lila in any universe. Yeah. When one is qualified, has attained the level of Prem. So here it's telling. But here. Yes, Bom Lila. Not there. Because any, there you, any, you're like any, this, any right? Any universe. Yeah. Any universe. Meaning in yeah, the material world. Yeah, mean material world. Universe, material, yeah. But any universe. But in yeah. the material world. Yes, material world. Okay. Even in the stage of Vastu City, the Jiva's attainment of Sri Sri Radha Krishna Jubal's service is dependent on the guidance of Sri Guru. Therefore, Sri Guru Dev is the embodiment of Bhagavan's mercy, and his mercy is not limited to this world alone. I'm just going to make a comment here, because today Maharaj and I were <coughs> we were discussing. Remember Maharaj? Mm -hmm. well, we were discussing about. Uh, the necessity of anugatya. Mm. So I was explaining to Maharaj that Gurudev, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, told us that in the whole Vaishnava vocabulary, this is one of the most important words, anugatya. So what is anugatya? To be under the shelter. To follow in the footstep of the Vaishnava or your Guru Dev. And under their guidance, mm -hmm. following their instructions, uh, serving them like this, as it describes here. Because in this world, without this connection with Guru, Guru Devatatma, we were in Australia with Guru Dev when he lectured on that verse. And the whole book, Guru Devatatma, came from that. Mm -hmm. And Gurudev was talking about this, how one will not feel or see any difference between oneself and Guru. Uh, Shamarani used to paraphrase this, I remember. She said, when we see Guru is coming, oh, my self has come, my very self. Guru Devata Atma, that one's own self is completely surrendered. There's non-different uh, from Sri Guru. Tadatmik, that means. Tadatmik. Tadatmik. So, <clears throat> this is required for perfection. There is no other circumvention of this principle. Never, ever possible. That's why in our Guru Vastakam, Yasya Prasada Bhagavat Prasada, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur has told at the very end, without his mercy, you cannot get the mercy of Bhagavan. Yeah. Yasya prasada, Bhagavat prasado. If you receive his mercy, Bhagavan automatically gives his mercy. But yasya prasada na, if you don't get his mercy, then what? Katiku topi. Your whereabouts, your destination is unknown. Gati. What you will attain. So, in the spiritual world, uh, there is also eternal anugatya. No one there is without anugatya. Even all the residents of Braj, who do they listen to for advice? They listen to Purnamasi Devi, Yoga Maya. What she says, they follow. So many anugatyas are there. Once I asked Srila Gurudev, once I asked him this question personally, that <clears throat> in the spiritual world, when we attain that destination, will we recognize our Guru there? Will we recognize among the maidservants of Srimati Radhika? And will there be that same relationship there of guru and disciple? And Gurudev said, no. We will not know that previously we were here in that way, but the anugatya will be there. Mm. And the relationship is not of guru and disciple. It is sakibhav, friendship. So sweet. Friendship. Very, very intimate. But Anugatya is always there. No one is serving Radha and Krishna 
without being under under Gatya. So Maharaj was asking me the question today about what about the <clears throat> does the Ashtashakis Ashtashakis they're you know bodily kaya vyuha expansions of Shimati Radhika herself. And under these Ashtashakis we have read in the Govinda Lilamrita and where there is description of Radha Kunda how in the transcendental Radha Kunda there are kunjas, eight kunjas, like eight petals of a lotus surrounding. And each of the eight uh, of the Astasakis have their own kunja there. And then in each kunja, there is a little section of that kunja in which the particular manjari of the Astamanjaris is, is serving under the anugatya of that particular Astasaki. Who are the Astamanjaris? They're also bodily expansions of Shrimati Radhika in terms of her Shriyam, her beauty. Mm -hmm. So, who are they? Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, like this, Lavanga Manjari. So, they are each under the guidance of a particular Astasaki. That's their eternal hierarchy, as Shula Shuda, Bhakti Rakshak Shri Maharaj puts it. The eternal hierarchy is there. Yeah. Because he was asking the question, well, aren't they just directly serving Radha? Radha and Krishna? No, no way. No. They're serving in the Anugatya. And then he asked the question, well, what about in the middle of the night when Radha and Krishna are there? The Astasakis can't be there at that time. So they are still serving. Hey, yes, of yes. course. Everything they do is under Anugatya. It is not that they have to physically be mm -hmm. with their Ashtasaki. You know? What about what about when Shrimati Radhika, uh, when one of them is sent to accompany Shrimati Radhika back to Yabat, you know? Uh, so they're not there with the necessarily they're not there with the Ashtasaki at that time, like that. So the point being made here is this same principle. That, you know, Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj is pointing out that actually Gurur Nityadas mm. is also most important. Mm -hmm. That we are eternal servants of Sri Guru. And Krishna himself uh, has come as Guru. Guru Rupe Krishna. Kripa Koren Bhaktagana. In the form of Guru, Krishna himself is giving uh, his Kripa, his mercy, to the devotees. So then I read about how, what not to speak of the stage of Sanana Bhakti, even in the liberated state, when the soul is situated in his eternal nature, Swarup Siddhi, none of his efforts bear fruit without the guidance of Sri Sri Guru Deva. Even in the stage of Vastu Siddhi, the jiva's attainment of Sri Sri Radha Krishna Jubal service is dependent on the guidance of Sri Guru. Therefore, Sri Guru Deva is the embodiment of Bhagavan's mercy, and his mercy is not limited to this world alone. It is said, he continues, Sri Guru Charana Satya Tahara Sevaka Nitya. So he's quoted a line from Nitai Patakamalam song. Nitai er charana satya tahara sevaka nitya that the lotus feet of Nityananda Prabhu are satya, eternal eternal truth. And tahara sevaka nitya those persons who serve his lotus feet they become eternal. So here He's replaced Sri Guru Charana Satya. The lotus feet of Sri Guru are eternal. Tahara Sevaka Nitya. The lotus feet of Sri Guru are truth, and I am eternally his servant. The relationship of servitude that the disciple establishes with Sri Guru Pada Padma at the time of Diksha is eternal. Now, we're going to have to explain that because it says the time of Diksha mm -hmm. 
What is tradition? Does it mean that when a person somehow or other got on the list, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, now they can go and get Diksha mantras from Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj, and uh, then after that, do what they please? No. Diksha is not just the giving and receiving of the mantras. What is Diksha? The verse from Srila Sanatana Goswami uh, he's describing. What is actually Diksha? Uh, so, Divya Gyanam Tato Dabyat Kuryat Papasya Sangshayam Tadak Dikshati Sa Prokta Deshikais Tattva Kovida Those who are expert in understanding or Tattva, transcendental truth, they have determined that the word Diksha, what does it mean? It means Divya Gyanam Tato Dabyat Transcendental knowledge, Divya Gyan, has been fully attained. So what does that mean? Does that mean book knowledge? No. Does that mean that you've read all the books and you've passed the information test? Yeah, realized. That, you, that you've read these books? Or does it mean something even beyond the books? What does it mean? What is Divya Gyan? Riddhi. Yeah. In, in the, the heart, heart, but yes. what jnana in yes. the heart? Big jnana. What has he realized? Yes. Big jnana of what? Right. Big jnana of what? Of his eternal position as servant of Sri Guru. That he is, uh, he has to be Tadatmaka with his Guru Dev completely. But not just that. Divya jnana means his actual realization of his Siddhasva Wow, mm -hmm. this is right. super high. Yeah. No, that's actually, you have not attained Diksha Unless until the full Divya Gyan has been achieved and so realized. Fast, that's, no, that means that's take a realization time, yeah. of Krishna's form, name, qualities, yes, pastimes, yes. of his eternal associates, yes. of his Dham, yes. and all of this. Is this is Bav? Divya Gyan. It's yeah. Bhav stage. Yes, at creeper. least. Wow. Yeah. Then, the second line. Divya Gyanam Tato Dadyat Kuryat papasya sangshayam. Now, papasya means the chain of sinful reactions. Kuryat papasya sangshayam. When all has been completely eliminated. Hmm? Sangshayam. Completely. Then, when these two things have occurred, then that is called diksha. So here, he's saying that the relationship of servitude that the disciple establishes with his Guru Padma at the time of Diksha is eternal. But what about if that person got the Diksha mantras, but they didn't follow, now they have to go to the next life, and the next life, and the next life. Is that relationship eternal? That is, not, that is not eternal. Only if there is full surrender, surrender to okay. Guru. Full surrender. Not somebody that got the mantras and then a little bit of time and then they just went their merry way. But suppose, for example, you have a disciple who fails his potential. Yeah. Like a failed transcendentalist. But he's tried. He's tried a bit. Yes. But then he's given up the path. Yeah. So Krishna, as you know, in Bhagavad Gita says that uh, a little bit of progress is not destroyed. Yes. Right. That the transcendentalists in the next <coughs> life yes. will pick up where he's left off. Yeah, that's right. So, by Sukriti. By Sukriti. And right. also by having attempted to do bhakti. Right. And then Srila Guru would say many times, you know, that uh, you may forget me, but I will never forget you. Yes. Right? So, but different still, different. there are many different quotations by many different personalities and we have to reconcile everything. all of them yeah okay. but I'm just giving showing this angle too yes. because where he says large. you know because uh, 
any little service, let's say someone has done, even let's say Jashila Prabhupada. Okay, listen, fallen. listen. I'll tell you what Guru Dev actually said on this also. Okay. Because he was asked this question. That, oh, it said in the Shastras that Guru will come back to rescue his disciple. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah, I know that. Yes. In, an, in another form, so, though. But not necessarily. That personality. It depends what relationship was developed with that personality. With that particular and person. And Bhakti Rakshak Sri Ramaraj explained this because Giri Raj Swami asked him this question. I heard it many, many years ago. He has answered to this. You know, will Guru come back to save us if we fall down and like this? Srila Sri Ramaraj said it depends on the disciples' intense attachment to his Guru mm -hmm. and how he served right. him and everything. Yes. But in general, Krishna. He is guru. Krishna is the guru. Right. And that's why he is telling to Uddhava that uh, oh Uddhava, you should know Acharya Mam Vijaniyan. You should know that I am the Acharya. Acharya Mam. I am the Acharya. So really Krishna is the personality. This is all in chapter one of Chaitan Charitamrita. Krishna is the personality who is rescuing the conditioned souls and through his manifestation of Sri Guru within this world. So it depends on the disciple because, you know, the relationship with... We may have had many life, lives before this. Mm -hmm. Maybe, not maybe, more lives after this to attain perfection in Sadhu Sangha and also initiation by Guru. Uh, but the Guru under whose Anugatya you will attain in the spiritual world is that Guru from whom you have received everything. Right. And so, real Diksha. Wow. Yeah. So, we also know... For, um, so beautiful. Like, for example, Bhakti Lata Bija. When Guru gives the seed of Bhakti mm. to the disciple, mm. that seed, what you're saying then, is not necessarily eternal, but it is. Because that seed in the next life, okay, let's say one has received, one has taken initiation, Sad Guru, right. right? He's given the seed. So in the next life, is the seed in the Atma of that disciple in the next life. Then it's to be watered by another Guru. Depending if this, if, if his the disciple seed. has received that seed. Right. Okay, but let's say... But what's uh, the criterion of the disciple having actually received that seed? Mm -hmm. Yes, that is what, uh, if you have, as you just described, if he has the attachment, depending on the relationship he has with the spiritual of master. Course. Of course. It depends on that. Right. So let's say some, regardless of that, they've yeah. just got taken initiation. Okay, One, two, so, three, so, four, so five, Srila Prabhupada yes. gave initiation to lots of disciples, yes. you know, especially in the early period, yep. and they were around for a few weeks, and then yes. they bye-bye. Right. Right. Does that mean that they received the seed of the Bhakti Lata Beach? Well, then that's arguable, because they received the seed, but it got absolutely no nourishment. It stuck there. Right? Yeah. So you can't say that they didn't receive the seed. The seed was given, but it stuck. Nothing happened to it. There was no watering whatsoever. Yeah. So in the next life, some arrangement or something has to happen, some mercy for that seed then to get some water from Sadhu Sangha. But, because but what happens, some. okay, if you want to really stick to the example of a seed, yeah. what happens to a seed when it doesn't get watered? It just stays dormant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it can also die. Yeah. Okay. Seed can also die. No, right. like the but, whole seed plant. Yeah, but the thing yeah. about it is, seeds dying, we have told. Yeah. When there's, let's say, severe upper rock, Yeah. Then the seed. Well, even would, then, it's not. It's cut not, and dry. It's not that, cut and dry because, because it depends the on the person's bhakti that he did before that upper rod. Right. Yes, it will be uprooted in the sense that. 
he will not get bhakti. He right. will be punished for right. some time period. Yes. But still, they can it be will a, come. It can come back. But that's to a person who's done so much. Right. You know, a, a parent, you know, trying to serve guru and Vaishnavas and like that. But then right. they become an aparadi, right. an offender. Uh, yes. So, so the, the, the thing about the seed, mm -hmm. does it... Um, do, is it ever vanquished once it's received by the spiritual master? That's the question then. You know, there is Sukriti mm -hmm. and there's Bhakti. Mm -hmm. But they got Bhakti and, Lata. And, and we know yeah. that where does Sadhu Sangha come from? Where does Bhakti, first of all, where does Bhakti, bhakti come from? There's a verse. Yes. Okay. Bhakti is to Bhagavad Bhakta. Right. From the Bhakti. Sangena right. Parijayate. Right. Bhakti comes from the Bhagavad Bhakta, the Sangha with him. Right. Sangha, Sangena. Right. It doesn't mean only seeing him one time. Mm -hmm. no. It means actual association, actual right. Sangha, following. Yes. Right. Now, the next line of that same verse says, well, how does this Sangha come to him? So then it says, Sat Sangha Prapyate Pumir. <coughs> uh, Satsanga prapyate pumbir deshikais. No, no. Satsanga prapyate pumbir purva sanchitai. Purva san. Yes. Sukritir purva sanchitai. That's what it is. Sukritir purva sanchitai. That means that satsanga prapyate. Satsanga is attained by what? Purva Sanchitai Sukriti. By previous lives, yes. combination of previous lives, yes. Sukriti. Right. Okay. We also know that in those previous lives, Sukriti, part of that Sukriti that is coming is from seeing the Vaishnava right. or even unconsciously doing some service for them, whatever. Right. Or even all different types, all different types of maybe. Sukriti. Yeah. 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 All different types of Sukriti. Yeah. It accumulates. When it accumulates to a certain point, then okay. that sadhu sangha that comes to that jiva, and the jiva actually becomes capable of associating with that sadhu, and following the instructions, taking initiation, and so forth, then very deep impressions of bhakti are now implanted. But before that, mostly sukriti. Right. Even Gurgavinda Maharaj used to say that iskan is a very big. Sukriti making machine mm -hmm. for all the jivas. So much Sukriti is being made. And of course, Gaudiya Mat and all. But the Bhakti Lata Bija, mm -hmm. okay, that requires some reception, some conscious reception. Even, even if for only a short time someone came and they were sincere for some time. So they will be given another opportunity, and then in the next life, yeah. that same seed can be watered. Right. But also, he's also receiving in the next life, yes. Bhakti Lata Beach. Exactly. This now, is you know, in this, uh, in the Chaitan Charitamrita, where it's describing the Gundicha Marjana, Lila, mm -hmm. cleansing the Gundicha, and then Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, Prabhupada includes purports, yeah. Yeah, purports from Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, uh, Describing what what does this mean? What is the meaning of this pastime? And it means cleaning the heart, cleansing the heart. Mahaprabhu himself is showing and instructing. And there he's dividing all these different, you know, little twigs and dust, and then the finer dust particles and all this. And it's all different types of anartas, referring to different types of anartas. And then there's a mention there about the bhakti lata beach. Also in the chapter of Chaitan Charitamrita in Rupa Siksha, as Mahaprabhu is discussing the Bhakti Lata Beach. But what is the what constitutes the Bhakti Lata Beach? Prabhupada is saying there it constitutes all the instructions uh, regarding the execution of bhakti and the following of those instructions. This is all constituting the Bhakti Lata Beach. You know? So the beach itself is a, it's like the, the lata, the bhakti lata. It's an analogy. Right. So the bija is also an analogy. Yeah, bija is an analogy. This is exactly yes, right. Because, for example, right. the bija, 
is the starting point, like a shraddha. It says it's one of the yes. beginning. Yes. Bhajan Kriya is higher. That's true. Bhajan Kriya is higher. And yeah. Bhajan Kriya are the instructions of Bhajan given by the Guru. Right. So it's above the beach. True. So the idea is that, um, I know what you're saying, sometimes it, it, the definition is stretched both ways. Sometimes it's just the shraddha, it's just the seed. And sometimes you're saying actually the full seed is where all the instructions are actually being followed and practiced. But yet there is no yeah. death, really, to be honest. That's it. No, yeah. We're but, just like continuing like yeah. a day but and we're, night, we're, day we're, and night. What we're talking night. about is that does the seed, uh, for someone who just gets it, but doesn't do any practice, doesn't get much practice in there, does that translate into the next life where they pick up, where they... I'll, give you, I'll give you an example. Like yesterday, what you did. I'll give you an example, an actual living example. Uh -huh. Once I was in Russia, in, this, in the town, in the city called Sochi, in the south of Russia. There was one lady there who had somehow, she had gotten Harinam initiation, I think in Iskand perhaps. And we were about to leave Sochi to go to Moscow to be at Gurudev's festival, which was his second festival in 2001. He had already been once to Russia. It was the second one. And so this lady, you know, she came to one of my programs, one or two of the programs that I was giving in a devotee's house there. And then she learned that we're going to Moscow to Sri Srila Gurudev like this. So, you know, she decided, okay, I'm going to come also. And when she came there, um, there were about 200 devotees who were getting initiated by Gurudev. And we were going over their names because Gurudev wanted us to very responsibly understand who each person is, what's their history, have they been a devotee for how long, all of these kind of things. Gurudev didn't want just anybody and everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was trusting the senior devotees, not just us, but also the senior Russian devotees and their recommendations and so forth, right? So this lady didn't have any senior Russian devotee or anyone to recommend her. And I also could see in her that she wasn't really, really ready. She's seeing Gurudev for the first time, for the first time, right? And then she became very intense with me because I was sitting there and I'm giving the permission or not, right? She said, I need to get Diksha. I need to get these mantras. You have to give me these mantras. And she just kept on pressing and pressing and pressing. So finally, I looked at her, and and I'll tell you why I said to her what I'm gonna, what I was going to say to her. That I'll tell after. So I told her. I says, okay, listen. I'm gonna recommend you. And you can receive from Sri Guru Dev. But you must follow. And you have a responsibility not only to him, but to me, to me, because I'm recommending you. Now, why did I say that to her? Because a few years before that, what was it, 1999, two years before that, when I brought the first devotees from Russia to Kartik, because I went in 99 to Russia, and then the first group of devotees came, and there was about a dozen or 15 of them, and, uh, you know, a lot of them, I mean, most of them, they were coming from ISKCON. And some of them had had initiation in ISKCON, but now they wanted to come to Gurudev. Uh, so, you know, Gurudev readily accepted it, it, toward the beginning of Kartik that they received Harinam. They received Harinam. But then, like, two weeks later, we're in Govardhan. And now, all of them, they wanted to take Diksha from Gurudev, you know. Some of them had been devotees for a number of years, and, you know. But when I came to Gurudev with their names in the morning, and I said, Shul Gurudev, they, they really want to receive, and they don't know if they'll be able to come back. I mean, this is before Gurudev went to Russia. So nobody knew whether Gurudev would go there, or if these devotees would be able to come, because at that time, so many of them were very poor also. You know, so um, 
So Gurudev looked at me with a very serious look because I was kind of beseeching him, please accept these devotees, give them. And then Gurudev said, I do not know them. You are recommending them to me. So responsibility is on your head. And he went boom on my head like this. Oh my God. So after that, yeah. I was very careful about sure. who I'm recommending to Gurudev. Right. Because some of those people who were recommended, they also didn't stay. Okay? So now I'm there in Moscow with this lady, and I told her like that. I told her, you have, to, you have a responsibility to me and to Gurudev, you know? What happens after the festival? One week later, she leaves, goes back to Wisconsin, never heard from her again. Did she get the Bhakti Lata Beach from Gurudev? Hell no. I will never say that she got the Bhakti Lata Beach from Gurudev. Okay? There was no real faith. There was no real true sincerity. She just wanted the mantra and like some magical yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. And I've seen this before, especially in Russians. <laughs> they have mystical tendencies, yeah. you know? Yeah. So so the point that I'm making is that the Bhakti Lata Beach you know, yeah. it is also constituted of all these other factors as well. Because Bhakti Lata Bija also means Krishna Seva Vasana, right? That the yes, desire to serve correct. Krishna. That is the outward the symptom, symptom of, of the Bhakti Lata, Lata Bija. Bija. Exactly. Very good, yeah, or, yeah. Yes. Very so good. that, if it's not there, then that symptom no. is not. What, what I'm trying to say is, for example, one of the symptoms of Bhakti, uh, what, what uh, Bhakti Shri Maharaj used to say, if someone has simply seen a sadhu, bhakti has started for them. Yes, right. it's true, because it's called bhakti unmukha sukriti. Right. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. They yes. have that sukriti. He says bhakti has already started. Yeah. So bhakti has already started. So in the next life, let's say, yeah. it's going to continue from that. Of course. If someone gets the seed even, even if they're just like, they don't even understand what it is right. and do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. But that's still quite a significant amount of good fortune. Yes. So, you see what I mean? That's such a it's huge amount of We're not saying that it's yeah. not good fortune. Exactly. And then in the next life, because they have zero sanskars and no intelligence, mm. and the, that can be built upon. There's no doubt. Yes, that's yeah. what I'm of saying. Of all the, yeah. you know, hundreds and hundreds of initiations Guru Dev gave, yeah. but how many of them yeah. have actually continued? Yes. I mean, I've gone to Malaysia many times with Guru Dave. So many Indian people came and yeah. they took initiation and then yeah. you never see them again after. Right. And right. there's a reincarnation also. People uh, yeah. they, 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 they don't think about that. I mean, it's a continuum. Yeah. Well, they, if you saw we are the just sun, continuing till that we, we reach the final stage. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're there's saying. There's no, yeah. uh, no stop. Uh, yeah, it continues. Yeah, we have posed, but no, we but we yes. there's no the stop. point that we're discussing. Right. right. Because yeah, we're exactly. discussing, yeah. you know, yeah. what actually constitutes yeah. the Bhakti Lata like Beach yeah. and whether or not someone has received it or in a particular yes. life right. from a particular guru. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So they will need to have more gurus in future lives. But what's being talked about here by Santa Goswami Maharaj is that intense Sri Guru Charana Satya Tahara Seva right. the lotus feet of Sri Guru are truth and I am eternally his servant. Right. So the relationship of servitude that the disciple establishes with Sri Guru Pada Padma at the time of Diksha is eternal. So even in the perfected stage in Sri Krishna's eternal pastimes, this relationship exists in a special form. Thus, in order for the jiva to realize his position as the eternal servant of Sri Krishna, it is absolutely necessary for him to serve Sri Guru Pada Padma. <clears throat> for this very reason, Sri Rupa Goswami has stated in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Vishram Bena Gurur Seva Sadhu Vartmanu Vartmanam Vartanam, that one ought to render intimate service to Sri Guru and follow the path of the sadhus. That is what it means. Mm -hmm. That without this intimate service, vishram babav, uh, what does it mean? Gurudev explained, vishram bena gurur seva. Mm -hmm. uh, that vishramba means deep love and affection. Mm -hmm. And feeling him to be the most intimate person. Mm -hmm. 
much more intimate than any family member or anything of this world. Yes. So Sri Guru Dev is the personification of Sri Bhagavan's mercy. In terms of potency of mercy, Sri Guru and Sri Bhagavan are one. Bhagavan's, Bhagavan possesses all potencies. And among all his potencies, his mercy potency reigns supreme. All other potencies of his are subordinate to this potency. Although Sri Gurudev is not omnipotent, the omnipotent Bhagavan is under his sway due to the power of his praying. Therefore, the mercy of Guru is all in all. So, after I completed this essay, I gave it to my senior godbrother, Sri Bhakti Sudhir Yachak Maharaj, who then sent it with great delight to Sri Dham Mayapur, where it eventually reached the lotus hands of Srila Prabhupada. This is still Santa Goswami Maharaj. Once Srila Prabhupada read it, he gave it to Sri Pranavananda Brahmachari to read, and he said, What Radharaman has written is correct. It is a matter of great delight that he has gained such spiritual insight at his young age. His conclusions in this essay are perfect and factual, and it should be published in our magazine Dainik Nadia Prakash for all to read. Later, Srila Prabhupada personally sent me a letter conveying his blessings to me. <coughs> so Vaishnavas like Srimad Bhakti Kumud Santa Goswami Maharaj and many other disciples of Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur are Mahan Vibhutis, great personalities. Their lives, their conduct, their thoughts, their vision, and everything else about them is such that we become increasingly astonished the more we hear and speak about them. Let me just see how much more is here. One, two, three. I'll just start heating the subji so that there it's okay. here. Yeah, that's okay. 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 Teaching. Okay, there's like about five more short little sections. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, how many devotees are there? Right now there are like two. Who are they? Um, oh, Devaki is there. Uh, Indira Burgos, Devaki Nandan. Oh, Devaki Nandan. Okay. And, uh, yeah, Indira. Acha, okay. <laughs> but many before. Oh, okay. So, I'll just, I, I'm not going to read the rest of this because it's already 9.20. Okay. So, I'm just going to read one little more section, okay? I'm just going to read one more section, Please, Gore. I'm hearing. Yeah, just uh, not the whole thing. I'll sure. just read one more section. I'm just it up so, that we'll be all ready by so the time. title of this, uh, this section is An Affectionate Refusal. Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj, being very merciful to me, gave me the opportunity to serve him in various ways. Oh, did that Shamasundari connect? Before, I mean? Uh... No, not, I don't know, because they all go, okay. but she will probably come. Yeah. So once my Guru Maharaj sent me to Puri, along with our Pujapad, Yashoda Jivan Brahmachari, Pujapad Acharya Maharaj, whose name was Goranga Prasad Brahmachari at the time, and others, for the important work of acquiring the property of Srila Prabhupada's birth site in Jagannath Puri. So while we were there, we stayed with Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj in a small house <clears throat> that he had purchased for the purpose of converting it into a mat. When the time of the Rathiyatra festival came, I sent Guranga Prasad Prabhu to humbly request Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj to allow us to stay in a nearby Dharmashala during the upcoming festival, since many of his disciples would be coming to stay with him in the small house. We could return after the festival, but we did not want to impose on Srila Maharaj or his followers. So upon hearing our request, 
Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj affectionately yet firmly replied in great surprise, How is it possible that I can accept this? The words, Yes, you can stay somewhere else, can never come from my mouth. Why? Because the work you came here to do, purchasing the property of Srila Prabhupada's birth site, was actually our duty, since we are his disciples. But we have not made the slightest endeavor for that. And we see that you are very enthusiastically accomplishing this work. Therefore, it is impossible for me to accept your proposal. And I request that although we are unable to provide you with so many facilities, please make any necessary adjustments with the facilities that we are capable of providing so that you can peacefully stay with us. A Vaishnava never considers this place is ours and we can manage everything. Everything should be done according to our desires. Instead, they think, no, this is not our place. This place belongs to the Vaishnavas, and we are its members, not its owners. We will cooperate with whoever comes, accommodating them according to the available facilities. Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj later gave me the opportunity to construct a proper mutt at the site of that house. He asked me, this is such a small place, but my disciples are telling me that you can create a decent plan and the layout for the construction of a mutt. Then I mentioned, this is Bharti Maharaj, yes, but because it is small, it cannot be constructed in a rectangular manner. It should be done in a parallel way. The ashram can be on one side, the temple can be on the other side. And then he replied, I don't understand parallel construction, rectangular construction, or any of these things. Please just do it in such a way that everything will be properly done. And after that, I made the plan, inspected everything, and oversaw the entire construction process. Wow. <laughs> so, actually, His mat, his own mat. Uh, no, the mat of his Guru Maharaj. Okay. The, this is the temple that they built on the birth site in Jagannath Puri of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Wow, okay. That mutt is along the Grand Road where the Rathiyatra carts come. And, oh, and, great. Yes. I've never been to Jagannath Puri. So Srila Bharti, oh, you have to go? Oh, yeah, definitely. So Srila Bharti Maharaj, you know, he, uh, he was actually responsible for constructing quite a number of different mutts. He's very expert oh. at all of those kinds of seva. Yeah. So that's why <coughs> Srila Bhakti Kumud Santa Maharaj is telling him that you do it. <laughs> nice. And he did it very wonderfully. Okay, just a little more. Mm -hmm. Extending an invitation to a king on his behalf. Another time, uh, Bhakti Kumud Santa Goswami Maharaj, he wanted to organize a large festival for the inauguration of a mutt that he <coughs> built in Keshiyadi in the district of Vardaman in Bengal. <clears throat> they had invited the king of Puri to be a guest of honor at the festival, but the king re declined. So knowing that I had a friendly relationship with the king, Srila Santa Goswami Raj wrote to me, ordering me to convince the king to attend the function. So on Srila Maharaj's order, I visited the king, who said, I have already told them that it is not possible for me to attend. Then I jokingly replied to the king, From that sentence, just remove the word not, and then it will be possible. <laughs> <laughs> so the king then told me that although he wanted to attend, he had, not, he had an engagement elsewhere at the same time as the festival. So after inquiring further, I came to know that the mutt was on the way to his other engagement. And I told him not to worry, and that I would arrange for his travel and everything if he would agree to visit the mutt for a short time on the way. Hearing this, the king accepted my proposal. I then personally brought the king to Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj's mutt for the inauguration festival. Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj ordered me to speak Harikata on that same day. And I chose to explain about the need for a Gaudiya mutt in Keshiyadi, a place known for its abundance of temples. In such a place, it would seem as if there were, would be no need for such a small mutt due to its proximity to many different temples. And I explained that despite this, 
there was in fact a dire need for a Godiamat. <clears throat> because even if people had the opportunity to go to the many temples there, they would never have their hearts changed. But the mat is a place where people can make their lives successful by smearing all over their bodies the foot dust of pure devotees. Oh. Here, a spiritual teacher will be present and those who want to become real, sincere spiritual students will be welcome to come, learn, and practice. The mat exists for the well-being of such persons and provides a great opportunity to its visitors to become fortunate by taking the mercy of the devotees residing there. In the association of such sadhus, learning the true deep meanings of the shastras is inevitable. It is our duty to remember Vaishnavas on their appearance and disappearance days, and to neglect this rule is certainly an aparad. We should definitely pray to him to continue to bestow his mercy upon us. So during our time together in Keshiyadi, Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj, and I received the opportunity to visit the appearance place of Sri Rasikananda Dev, a disciple of Sri Shamananda Prabhu. And the devotees there wanted to offer pranami to Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj, but he flatly refused, saying, This is the place of our Guru Varga. How can I accept pranami here? Instead of accepting the devotees' pranami, he offered pranami to them. And then uh, he tell, Oh, here's a nice photo of Srila Bharati Maharaj with Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj. So, uh, this is Yeah, we're almost near the end. I might as well finish it. <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> by the mercy of Srila Santa Goswami Maharaj, I was able to render various services to him. As a result of these services, he became pleased with me, and our relationship deepened. And his affection for me became so strong that whenever we stayed in the same place, he never allowed me to take prasad without him or to stay anywhere other than his room. But during the festivals or any other functions where my Guru Maharaj or his godbrothers were present, I always sat on the ground while they sat on the dais. But once, Srila Santa Goswami Raj ordered me to join them on the stage. Then being embarrassed to sit on the same level as my Guru Varga, I declined. But my Guru Maharaj told me, because Pujapad Santa Maharaj has given the order, you must sit with us. Do not say no. He was the first disciple of Srila Prabhupada to ask me to sit on the dais. From then on, I began to sit on the stage. I never did so before that. And <clears throat> Srila Bhakti Pramod Santa Goswami Raj, once he spoke the following on the appearance day of Sri Srimad Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Raj. Quote, Two of our most worshipful Vaishnavas, Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Raj and Srila Bhakti Hridaya Van Goswami Maharaj, they mercifully brought this unworthy soul to the proximity of His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada, whereby I attained the shelter of His lotus feet. It is impossible for me to repay the infinite compassion they showed me. All I can do is express to them my most sincere gratitude. That I have been able to adhere to this path of bhakti even at the age of 84 is possible only because of Sripad Puri Maharaja's continuous guidance, and I am deeply indebted to him for this. <clears throat> Srila Puri Maharaj is extremely well educated and well versed in scripture. Learned men are plentiful, but a truly knowledgeable man is rare. The knowledge he imparts is not merely bookish, nor should it be considered speculative reasoning. Rather, it is most relishable and enlightening simply because it is transcendentally beautiful and divine in nature. By the grace of his Guru Dev, the divine qualities of a bona fide Acharya were already evident in his activities from the outset of his spiritual pursuits. Although he was always grave in his dealings, he never disregarded anybody. 
He never cheated anyone, nor was he ever dishonest. His exemplary life and conduct can be aptly described through the following verse of the Mundaka Upanishad, Tad Vigyanartam Sagurameva Vigachchet Samit Pani Shrotriyam Brahmanishtam. This means that in order to obtain Bhagavad Bhakti, one should humbly approach a spiritual master who is well versed in that science and offer to him his body, mind, and speech. In other words, he should completely surrender to Sri Guru. I consider myself Sri Puri Maharaj's younger brother, god brother, and he is also my Siksha Guru, from whom I have learnt the subtleties of the Vedic scriptures. So that is the end of this article, but there's a few short that the little... three danda, right? What? Three danda means the the mind, the speech, and the body. Yeah. Mm. So a few of his teachings, just little excerpts from his teachings. Uh, there's like uh, five, six, six little excerpts from his teachings. The following are a few of Sri Santa Goswami Maharaj's teachings that left an indelible impression in my heart. Quote, in order to taste bhakti rasa, two components are indispensable. Two components, a realized speaker and a sincerely inquisitive listener. Our inability to experience this rasa is solely due to an absence of either of these two requirements. Such genuine transcendental experience can never be achieved through a mere act of imitation. Next quote. That's beautiful. Sri Guru is an ocean of mercy, whereas the material world is an ocean of birth and death. The only means to cross over this woeful ocean is to surrender exclusively to the lotus feet of the spiritual master. Sri Guru has no occupation other than performing Bhagavad Bhakti. And by the infinite grace of his preceptor, he is well versed in every aspect of the transcendental realm. Having already obtained the mercy of his predecessor Acharyas, he too possesses all the qualities of a true Acharya. And thus, Sri Guru is qualified to bestow blessings on others and deliver the fallen souls. So if we deeply consider the principles of Sri Guru, we find that the root words gu and ru in Sanskrit means darkness and that which destroys or eliminates, respectively. Gu, ru, that which destroys and eliminates darkness. Therefore, it is evident that one who is incapable of removing the darkness of ignorance from the hearts of the living entities cannot be considered a true guru. Living our lives in this material world is difficult and dangerous, like walking on the sharp edge of a razor. Every step, ri every step gives rise to sorrow and pain. Moreover, to be bereft of spiritual knowledge is a source of great misery. Next one. It is impossible to realize the absolute truth through parrot-like preaching or the pursuit of speculative knowledge. The purports of the Vedic scriptures are revealed through the medium of Sri Guru only to the surrendered bhaktas who serve the spiritual master with the same completely pure and unalloyed devotion with which they serve Bhagavan. Wow. And the last quote here. <clears throat> Real education begins when one's capacity to learn is directed toward serving Sri Hari. Again. Real education begins when one's capacity to learn is directed towards serving Sri Hari. Many individuals study scriptures merely to exhibit their half-baked knowledge, but such ambition is strictly forbidden. True knowledge is that which inspires one to seek the service of Bhagavan. Gaur Prema Mani. Hari Bhakti Kumud Santa Goswami Maharaja Ki Jai. Srila Akinshana Krishna Das Babaji Maharaja Ki Jai. Gaur Prema Mani. Vansha Kalpatamu Vrascha. 
Kripa Sindhu Vyevacha, Satipanam Pamane Vyo, Vaishnavi Vyo, 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 Vyo,